And yes, I did the math because I am a nerdy girl. I am such a nerdy girl that I was on the slide rule team in high school. <laughs> and I know by saying the word slide rule, I'm dating myself. But I was dating myself in high school, so some things have never changed. <laughs> But we have so much pressure to behave in a certain manner. When we see somebody that we like, we shake a hand. Even though the American Medical Association has told us that <laughs> that is the worst thing you could possibly do to somebody because you're sharing your cold and flu germs. But if doing this is not a possibility, what do we do instead? I am blessed with people who are adults or seem to be adults. Um, physiologically, uh, and yet they still remember how to play. That's because when I meet people who have a sense of joy and childishness to them, I stalk them until they came in and agreed to be my friends. It's a, it's a good policy for me. Um, and so I asked several of my friends what they regularly do for play. My friend Melody is part of a zombie flash mob. <laughs> and they regularly dance to a number of different songs, not just Michael Jackson's thrillers, while dressed up in costumes, often as zombies. And that would be categorized as play. I have a friend, Jody, who loves to hike, as many of us in this state do. But she likes to hike in costume. <laughs> and she sent me a picture of her and a friend, Jeff, dressed as giant bananas up in the mountains. So if you're ever on a hiking trail and you come around a bend and you think you're having a Chiquita hallucination, that'll just be a friend of mine. My friend Jennifer and I, one of the ways that we bonded is we both love hula hooping. She takes hula hoops with her wherever she goes. I taught gerunds and infinitives to the grammar class at the School of Journalism and Communications while hula hooping. <laughs> I'm pretty sure those students never forget that lesson on gerunds and infinitives because of the, the mode. And I got to have fun while I was doing it. So there are people who understand it, but mostly the people who understand the value of play are the children. I love that. Can I dance? <laughs> um, are the children and not the adults. And so we want to start moving in the direction of how can we get to be more childlike. So in my life as a speaker who talks about humor and stress management, there had been this statistic out in the ether that said the average American child laughs 150 to 200 times a day. And I discovered there was no research that proved that. And being a nerdy girl, I decided I needed to do the research. So I got permission from Lane County Head Start and the parents of the students at Lane County Head Start to follow three, four, and five-year-olds around for the day. One of the best experiences I have ever had. A little four-year-old boy asked me on a date to play Legos at his house. That's the closest I've come to dating in the past eight years. <laughs> I almost took it up on it. And I followed them, and every time they laughed, I made a note of it, and I noted what they were doing at the time. And then I extrapolated, because I am a nerdy girl, to the number of hours their parents said that they were usually up. And it came out that 150 to 200 times a day is approximately right. And this is not for every three, four, and five-year-old, but most three, four, and five-year-olds are laughing a lot. And what do you think they were laughing at? What were they doing when they were laughing? They were playing. They were not telling jokes. We have this belief in our mind that laughter comes from something that's funny. Do you know that only 30% of the reasons we laugh have to do with anything being perceived as funny by our brains? And so if we can tap into that other 70% which comes from play and social bonding which also happens when we're playing with other people. So they were playing. 150 to 200 laughs a day. What do you think it is for grown-ups? <laughs> it is 15. But the reason it is that high is I'm bringing your average up. <laughs> and that is a lot of weight to carry on my shoulders on days when maybe I fall behind a little bit. People actually did this study. They followed a thousand American adults around. I'm glad that I followed the children. It was probably a lot less boring. And they followed them around for a week and they calculated how often people laugh. And um, 
there were 40% of the people in this study left zero to three times a day. And it was the people, the 10% of the people like me who laughed 90 times a day or more who skewed the mean. And so if, when I ask you that question, you think, well, it's two, or it's five, or it's 20. That's probably the situation that you're in, and you're probably mimicking that level of laughter. And one of the easiest ways to move us in the direction of getting more laughs is to move us in the direction of being more playful as well. So where are my parents? Raise your hand if you're a parent. OK, excellent. Grandparents? OK, so you all understand the value of play for children, right? We have it. It's, it's in what, what we are as parental units. I am a, a canine parental unit, unit person, but I also understand the value of play for them, too. So play for small children helps with mental development. It helps with physical development. It helps with social bonding, building friendship networks, and creating boundaries. It does all of those things for grown-ups, too. It also, when you're an adult, helps you build flexibility and resilience and creativity because you're thinking outside of your usual comfort zone. And it does so many amazing things. And one of them is it increases your willingness to take risk. And when we're not willing to take risk, our lives are so very limited to the little rut we have drawn for ourselves on the ground our entire lives. And when you're willing to step out of that and do something crazy, like I dressed myself this morning, can you tell me? <laughs> Just like a five and a half year old did that. So we need to aspire to do that. The crazy thing is that every study done so far has found that there is no species that does not have a laughter play response. And if you have dogs, if you have cats, if you have birds, I have koi fish. I know when my koi fish are playful. I have one who actually jumps up out of the water in joy when the spring arrives. We have a laughter play response because laughter and play has a biological function, and that is survival. And if we're not playing enough, we're not laughing enough. And if we're not laughing enough, we're not venting our stressful energy when things go bad. Um, we can let them go more quickly if we can find the playful side of that. So we need to be doing that more. So let me tell you what I think play is, because many of you may think you're playing, <coughs> and I may disagree. Um, many of you may play words with friends, or tennis, or candy crush, or anything, bridge, for example. That would not follow my definition of play. So I have to come up with a four-letter acronym for play. And it spells out the word play. Look at this word. <laughs> P stands for physical. And my definition of physical means you must use your body in a way that you are unaccustomed to using that brings you joy. So that means playing tennis, even though it's physical, you're accustomed. You know the moves. You practice the moves. That doesn't fit as play. Um, there's an old Calvin and Hobbes cartoon, and I will summarize it. And Calvin comes up to his dad, and he says, Dad, why don't grown-ups play? And Dad says, well, we do. We just call it working out, and we have to keep notes on how well we're doing towards achieving our goals. And Calvin says, so you just take play, and you take all the fun out of it. <laughs> and basically, that's where, to me, the difference is between play and work. And think about how many things in your life you put the word work on. People always tell me, well, your workshop is, I go, no, my play shop is, because I don't want to do any more work. I want to do some play. So we want to be physical in a way that challenges our bodies. So I teach improv class, and in improv class, one minute you can be an octopus learning to knit, <laughs> and the next minute you can be a superhero named Kitten Woman whose superpowers are shredding the draperies and going, shh. <laughs> That is the kind of play that we're talking about. We want to get physical. Do you know that one of the best ways to get your muscle memory to remember what it was like to be a five-year-old is this? That's all it took. You were down at the eye level of five-year-old. Where do you get when you greet a small child or a dog? And in what attitude are you when you greet a small child or a dog? It's like, oh, it's a good boy. Oh, it's a good boy. Imagine going into a retailer 
<laughs> Who's a good sales clerk? Are you a good sales clerk? It would change everything. So physical. We want to be physical in a way that is uncomfortable. Now, when I say physical, I mean from head to toe. Your eyebrows are part. Your face. How many, how often have you done something like this like you? Right? We don't do that because it's stupid. We don't do that because it's silly. We don't do that because our ego says, don't do that. People will think you're an oddball. You know what? You're oddballs. We're all oddballs. We should celebrate that instead of hiding that. So remember, it's head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. That's your body, the whole thing. L stands for laughter inducing. I've been here the whole day. I can tell which of you know how to laugh. Not all of you do. Because <laughs> does not count. <laughs> it will not get you any of the benefits that you need to get from laughter and play. Neither will, well, that was amusing. <laughs> Neither will LOL, <laughs> which stands for lying online. <laughs> because you know, and I know, and studies have shown that when you're typing LOL, you are not laughing out loud. And for God's sakes, you are not rolling on the floor, so stop typing it. <laughs> we roll on the floor and improv. If you don't have bruises on your hips, you are not rolling on the floor. So when I say laughing out loud, I mean, where's my microphone? <laughs> Do you see how much that hurts me? <laughs> One minute of belly laughing is the equivalent in terms of abdominal toning of 25 sit-ups. <laughs> Personally, I don't think we all need to have abs like a washboard, have abs like a dashboard now. Have a little built-in airbag I didn't need to have. as easily as if we're good. So you need to work on the laughter. So play, laughter, adventurous. You need to be uncomfortable. We have so much of a fear of getting outside of our comfort zone, and outside of your comfort zone is where joy lies. Outside of your comfort zone is where creativity lies, and it's definitely where play lies. So, um, um, two years ago, my friend Jennifer of the hula hooping person, Jennifer, invited me to do a naked photo shoot with 50 other women outside. I don't even shower naked. I thought, well, I need to live up to my own expectations and do something uncomfortable. So I said yes. So we're in a giant warehouse. The photograph is amazing, and it's a feminist photo, and it's we're taking women taking power back from politics and and the medical community and journalists, and we're chasing these people down. But we are naked, and we are outside, and we have crossed Bertelson and Eleven naked. <laughs> and the most fun part, besides the hula hoop, because Jennifer brought her hula hoops, so and we hula hoop naked in the parking lot, is we had strange women patting mud on our bodies while standing in a kiddie pool. It was amazing. <laughs> And also amazing, I'm standing there naked and I make eye contact with a woman she, and I can tell she knows who I am and I have no idea. And she comes up to me and she says, Professor Joshua, I took your grammar class. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, and now you're going to see my tramp stamp. Woohoo! <laughs> Adventurous. And the last one is youthful. You must, while playing, not feel your age. And in fact, if you've done a good job for two or three hours, you must not feel your age. Later, with a hot pack in the tub, you might feel your age. But we want to be as youthful as possible and get to that. To me, the idea of flow, flow simply has to do with being youthful. Because youth are not aware of the passage of time. Youth are not aware of the, the burden of responsibility that we grown-up humans carry around all the time. So physical, laughter-inducing, adventurous, and youthful. So I want to give you just a couple of quick tips. Easiest one. You see what I'm wearing? These are span. These are spandex, right? Dress to play. When you are wearing uncomfortable clothing, you are not in a playful mood. I once did a presentation for a group of upper-level financial officers for the state of Oregon, and they all came in in their suits and ties, and there were 150 of them. They sat down, and I said to them, would you all take off your shoes? And the women just went crazy. 
grace. Oh, God, I get to take these shoes, please. We don't know how much these are hurting my feet. Oh, like, why do we do things like that? Spandex. I, I mean, not spandex. I mean, Spanx. One of the least playful body garments ever invented. <laughs> I have never worn, worn Spanx. I wear a cheap British knockoff version occasionally called a slight tap on the bottom. <laughs> they have a little more leeway to them. Don't wear them. They're not playful because you can't be playful if you if you have an opportunity to play frisbee in the parking lot and yet you're wearing high heels and spanks and a tie, which would be kind of an interesting program. <laughs> you're not gonna do it. Make playful friends. People who not only encourage you to play and don't become one of those voices in your head that go, oh, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> and we all have those people. I'm not saying dump those people. Consider dumping those people. But definitely make more friends who encourage you to play. My friend Donna LeBlanc, her husband developed late stage Alzheimer's after several years of having Alzheimer's and had to go to live in an Alzheimer's care facility. And he no longer remembered her, and he no longer remembered their 50-year marriage. And for six months, she spiraled into depression. And Donna is one of the most joyful, playful people I've ever met. And she called me after six months and said, I am so tired of feeling this way, I've decided to become happy again. And I know that the only person who can do that is me. And so she, what she decided to do is since her husband didn't recognize her, she decided every time she went to see him, she'd be somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so she told me about the time she was Marilyn Monroe. Oh, so yeah. she's this short, she's in her 80s, she's wearing a platinum blonde wig, a little squishy skirt, high heels, and she sashays into the, that's my idea of sashaying apparently, <laughs> sashays into the nursing home. That made their day. And if you've ever been in a dementia care center, you know that's a very difficult place to be. And her husband spotted her from across the lobby. <laughs> he recognized Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> and since he didn't know any better, she said they dated in high school, which made him very happy, which made her very happy. And the last tip that I want to give you is hiding here behind some water. Let me just. If you need to challenge your ego on a regular basis, if you allow your ego to run your life, you will never play. You'll never get out of your comfort zone, and you won't really experience the level of joy that I believe human beings are meant to experience. And I will show you how easy it is to know you're meant to experience that joy. How many of you want this? <laughs> right? <laughs> but if I give it to you, somebody's going to give it to a child or a dog or a cat. Because we don't know how to play. Somebody says, yes, I don't know how to play. Throw it to me. <laughs> so challenge your e ego can be difficult, especially if you've never done it before. I used to fly a lot. And if you know, if you fly a lot, you're always trying to catch your connecting flight, which is always at the other end of the airport. And so you need people to get out of your way. And so people get out of your way. Plus, I'm a hot flesh and woman making my own breeze. And I have a hickey after, so it's all good. But see, did your ego go, oh, no way? <laughs> I could never do that, even among strangers. Do you think I might have a better experience in the airport than most people do? <laughs> because I'm willing to play. I always recommend that everybody keep in their glove box an animal snout. <laughs> So that the next time you're stuck in traffic, you strap on a snout. I guarantee it'll change your entire perspective. Watch this. How could it not change your perspective? I did a presentation for a group of educators in Salem, and a woman emailed me the next day and said she'd gone out at lunch and bought a pig snout, and a guy started to follow her. So she said she pulled into a 7-Eleven parking lot, she rolled her window down just a little bit, and the man said, I'm really not dangerous, what's with the pig snout? And she was quick on her feet and said, I've been married for 27 years, and this is the way we keep the spark in our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that you are inspired to in some way, whether it's to go to the local schoolyard and get on the swings, by the way, if you get on the monkey bars, remember that if you hang by your knees from the monkey bars, in order to get out of that position, you have to rotate through your shoulders. 
don't ask me how I know this. <laughs> I had a seven-year-old boy trying to explain to me how to get off the monkey bars the other day because I was stuck because my shoulders don't rotate the way that they used to. So stick to the swings of the slide. <laughs> Enroll in an improv class. Make friends with five-year-olds and 80-year-olds because a lot more people in their 80s play than people in their 40s and 50s and 60s. I want to end with two quotes that I find really inspiring. Um, and the first is by one of my favorite authors and artists, Brian Andreas, and it's a reminder from children, and, and it goes like this. I wouldn't mind being a grown-up, she said, if I didn't have to get up every morning and be grumpy right away. <laughs> <laughs> Very sad, but when I was at, at Lane County Head Start and asking kids what their parents did for fun, three of them said sleep. <laughs> and my last quote is by Tom Robbins, who changed my life in so many ways, and it is, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. So I wish that for you as well. Thank, Thank you. you.